My name is Alex Dorge and I'm an Ansible specialist and I'm going to be walking through how I can use Inventor and Ansible to help do some automatic remediation of networking devices. Why am I focused on Inventor and Ansible for networking? Really my goal is to respond just like any other system as quickly as possible and as consistently as possible to any sort of issues that arise. So whether it's a down interface, BGP flapping, or anything that can be detected via telemetry gathering or any sort of monitoring solution you already have in place like SolarWinds, I want to take that information and provide actions to start that resolution process. This can be as simple as creating the ticket or gathering that first set of logs and information to provide to that first line engineer, or it's going through that entire resolution process with something that's written by the experts that understand what steps need to be taken to resolve it. So I know that whether it's 2 a.m. on a Saturday or it's 3 p.m. on a Thursday, I'm getting that exact same resolution process so I can ensure I've got consistency and confidence that I won't be breaking systems further, and then I know that my systems will be back up as soon as possible. So from an architecture standpoint, this is what I have set up. I have two virtualized Arista EOS devices with GMNI enabled. It's a telemetry open source platform that allows some consistency and I get some nice JSON output that I can use. And then I've got an open source project for Telegraph to actually stream in that data, which then for me is sent to a Kafka messaging bus, conveniently a network topic, that then event-driven Ansible subscribe to. And then based on certain conditions, I can use that to trigger a job and then rem run remediation on the exact issue and the exact device that is causing that issue. So again, it gives me that consistency in terms of only remediating exactly what I want on the device that I need it to be on. So for Telegraph, this is the configuration that I have set up. These are the kind of key pieces for this to work specifically for my demonstration. So I am outputting specifically to a Kafka broker with that networking topic, which I've previously created. And then for the telemetry input, I can have this across multiple GNMI servers, which are just my networking devices with this specific port, connecting via username and password, and then having that JSON encoding that I talked about. So I've got that consistent data structure. And then I can have as many subscriptions as I want. So this is the actual information that I'm getting from the device. In this case, I'm actually looking at the interface state, but there are a ton of other options. So you can get all kinds of data specifically from those devices. But this at least allows me to see all of the interfaces and if they're actually enabled or what their admin status is. So this is the rule book that I've created for this, again, using Kafka as my event source, listening to a specific port and a specific topic. And I'm looking specifically for that admin status being down. And then I'm going to just run my network interface remediation job template. I'm setting this up to only operate on that one down interface as well as only that device, because I don't need to try to brute force any other device that are there, even though with the item potent nature of Ansible, it wouldn't impact anything, but this ensures that I'm hitting the exact device and the exact issue to minimize that overall time to resolution. As you start expanding out what you might wanna do with event-driven Ansible, think of all the other network observability, network management tools, what sort of information you get from them, and use that to start driving those decisions. So have that plug into event-driven Ansible, and then really do that full process, whether it's gathering information, remediating, notifying teams via Slack or certain Slack channels, or actually creating the incidents or problems inside ServiceNow, I can now streamline and reduce that overall time to resolution. And I can reduce the overall errors on that remediation because, again, I've codified exactly what my process looks like in terms of this resolution. So let's take a look at what this can actually look like in process to see a interface being turned off on an Arista device and how that can immediately lead to a resolution through event-driven Ansible. Let's start by looking at the event-driven Ansible controller. As you can see, I've got a rulebook activation already running, in this case, for that Kafka networking rulebook activation. And I can see via the history that it is running and has successfully connected to my network topic. Once again, looking at that rule book, I can see that I am specifically connected to that Kafka server, that particular Kafka port and networking. And then for the rule book activation itself, I am looking for this particular condition. And I'll show a little bit more about what I'm looking for in a second. For the remediation itself, I'm actually running this particular playbook. So all I'm looking for is either running on all devices or the rule book itself, as you saw, was passing a particular device. So I'm only going to run that remediation on this particular host. And this role, this network interface remediate role, I've set it up to be network OS agnostic. So it will work against multiple OSs. And for this one, I am specifically running on Arista. So really all I'm doing is using the EOS interfaces module to enable that particular interface. That's it. 
and I'm only merging it, so I'm not making changes to the rest of the device. I'm simply making a change to that single interface that's passed via the event, um, in this case, from Telegraph. So let's look at what I actually have set up. So this is my Kafka server that I have running. It also has Telegraph installed. So you can see here, I do have Telegraph up and running, and it is listening to that Kafka host. If I also look then at um, Podman, because that's what I'm leveraging for the particular aspect of uh, Kafka, rather than uh, it's not like being an RPM or anything like that. So the Kafka server is up and running. You can, if you want, install um, GNMIC, which basically the client for GNMI. So it can give you a little bit of extra capability. So you can see you know, what capabilities are actually available on your networking device. Um, this is a very, very large list, as you can see. You do not need to install this client on your server. This is just to help you as you get started to see what sort of paths might be available to you. So this is kind of that full list. And if I want to see the particular path, in this case, that interfaces interface state path that I'm actually using inside Telegraph, I can run this command and it shows me everything that's actually being returned in that particular path. So this is a good way to see ahead of time what's available to you to run conditions against. So this is just the interfaces and as you can see, I'm particularly looking for the admin status. And then I've got my Kafka topic actually listening to that. So before I do anything on that ends device, I'm actually just going to basically subscribe to that particular topic. And I can see all the commands that are getting sent in. So I can see each individual field that's being sent, the description, the admin status. So while I'm getting all of these, the only thing I'm running the condition on is this admin status. So right now I can see that the admin status is up on this particular host, RTRE2 but that's not the one that I'm going to use. I'm going to use one of my other ones. So I've got RTRE1 running, and I'm going to verify that in this case, the port and the interface is still up. So I'm just going to run a simple shut command to take down that interface. And I can see here that it is now shut down. And I'll see here shortly, that'll show up as enabled false. So there we go. I can see it's enabled false and admin status down. And I'll switch over now to my event-driven Ansible server. I can see that it's actually launched that job network interface remediation networking. I can see that that job is already running. It's going to enable that down to interface. And now it's successful. So I can actually go back to my server. I can already see that it's been updated here in Kafka. And if I go back here and just rerun, I can see that that port has been re-enabled. So a very simple use case leveraging, in this case, Telegraph, Kafka, and then event driven Ansible, and then just running a very simple re remediation to re-enable that downed interface. Now that we've walked through a demonstration of a particular interface being down across possibly my entire network infrastructure, let's take a step back and look at how you can get started for this. So generally I recommend doing something simple, a read only task like fact gathering. So I can use the particular network device fact module, iOS facts, EOS facts, to gather that full current device state and then populate something like a service now ticket so that first line engineer has much more information as they get started. As you start building out more network automation, get more comfortable with it, maybe you get to the state of having your full device configuration managed as code, I can start looking at, well, anytime a particular issue comes in, I want to redeploy that device configuration. This guarantees that I'll have drift or any sort of other configuration changes because that device is managed in some sort of source control management system. And I just want to redeploy it to make sure everything is exactly as I have it defined. As you get more advanced and start looking at, well, sometimes multiple devices may need to be in play. This will largely go back to your existing understanding of your network and your troubleshooting procedures. But maybe I need to reroute traffic to a faster protocol or reroute to a different networking device based on intermittent issues. I can still leverage Ansible for that. And this may start adding in something like AI that is looking through the different troubles that are coming up. I can still have that reach out to Venture and Ansible to run the actions that remediate that particular issue. And then as you look at to really that full grand scheme of things, hardware refreshes, network device refreshes. I can have Ansible do that full deployment configuration, operational state validation to ensure that I can just plug in a device and have that immediately added into that configuration as code that I previously discussed. This ensures that I can have that same device configuration, no matter if it's deployed directly to my office, deployed to an end site. I know it's deployed exactly the same way every time, so I don't have to worry about a procedure on a Word document. I don't have to worry about someone mistyping a command. It's deployed exactly the same way every single time. So this, again, provides that consistency that you're looking for in managing your network. 
So I'll include in the description down below a couple of blogs as well as the things that I've already worked on. So this NetOps blog was something that was created that helped drive this idea for me to create this particular video. It'll walk through some of the ideas of using Telegraph as well as the Arista devices. I'll include also my rulebook and my role that does the installation and configuration of Telegraph that I shared before. And then I'm also adding in a video from one of my colleagues that leverages other monitoring tools such as SolarWinds to see how that can help trigger some of the event-driven Ansible automation for networking devices. So thanks for taking the time to learn a little bit more about how Ansible can specifically work with networking devices from event-driven automation. Hopefully this will give you an idea of how you can start diving deeper into your particular networking challenges and start working towards some of that proactive and reactive automation. Thank you. Click my picture on the right to subscribe or click the image on the left to watch another video.